Demi Lovato slam for defending Scooter Braun. Kylie Jenner breaks down over Jordan Woods' drama. And Billie Eilish reacts to Tana Mojo's engagement. All that and more on today's Daily Hollywood Rundown. What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Daily Hollywood Rundown. Shanae! Hi! We legit have not hosted DHR together in like two years. I'm this, not even kidding. I feel, it feels it's that long. Forever. It was probably like November, but like yeah. still, it feels like a really long time. I didn't get the casual Monday memo. Well, I didn't get the like, <laughs> don't look like you just rolled out of bed memo. So I apologize. You look great. So do you. You look so, great. Just different vibes. But guys, I'm so happy you're here. Since you're here, mm -hmm. you should probably subscribe. Do it. Because then you'll get notified every time we post. And if you click that bell, you really get the notifications yeah. like legit, legit. You want the notifications, especially like on days like today. Oh my God. There is so much news to talk about which of course we want you to comment about once we talk about it yeah. but um first of all before we get into take, this take I just, a deep yeah breath. i just want to preface that this is a lot it's a lot taylor swift was on one but after she started talking the whole world started talking yeah first of all Sinead, i don't even know where to begin with this taylor swift news because i was just trying to enjoy my sunday evening with a glass of wine and every 30 minutes there was some new update with taylor <laughs> swift and like this whole story yeah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we're gonna break it down right now. And like I said, just get ready because it's a lot. So Taylor spoke out on Tumblr regarding the deal that made headlines this weekend where it was revealed that Scooter Braun will be in possession of Taylor's entire music catalog, except Lover after his media holding company at the Holdings acquires Big Machine Label Group, right? So Taylor spoke out against this and explains why she felt this was so shady. And she further revealed that she learned along with the rest of the world that none other than Scooter Braun would be the owner of her masters. And that all she could think of after hearing this was the bullying that she suffered at his hands. Well, so many fans and celebs have weighed in on this, either supporting Taylor or supporting Scooter. And we break that down in some of our daily stories. However, most people are talking about Justin Bieber, Demi Lovato, and Todrick Hall. So Justin Bieber took to his Instagram to address Taylor's response, and he didn't hold back. He said, Scooter has had your back since the days you graciously let me open up for you. As the years have passed, we haven't crossed paths and gotten to communicate our differences, hurts, or frustrations. So for you to take it to social media and get people to hate on Scooter isn't fair. What were you trying to accomplish by posting that blog? Seems to me like it was to get sympathy. You also knew that in posting that, your fans would go and bully Scooter. He also said that dealing with this online probably isn't the best solution, but he had to speak out because she was defacing Scooter's character. So Sinead, the interesting thing was, first of all, I didn't know people still use Tumblr. Um, yeah, me neither. I was like, wait, 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 Tumblr? What? I knew Taylor was still on there, but like to have that be the place where she posts her statement, that's interesting. Anyway, yeah. um, point being, this really made headlines when Justin made his response, because I saw right. Justin's post first before I saw Taylor's so, post. Same, so did I. I was like, wait, 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 hold yeah. on. Everybody, hold on. Um, but basically, I think the reason why Justin said something in the first place, because a lot of people are like, why are you involving yourself? Right, right. Is because the way that Taylor started her Tumblr post, that open letter was by calling Scooter out for the picture he posted uh -huh. of him, Kanye, and Justin. Right. But Justin posted that. Right. And Justin was saying, hey, by the way, this is the honest truth. I posted this. I thought it was funny at the time. Like, it actually isn't. But Scooter was the one that told me, don't post it. Right. So I think that's why this whole thing started. Because a lot of people are like, how come, you know, why are we feeling we need to defend him in the first place? Right. And I don't think Justin was defending necessarily Scooter acquiring all of Taylor's music. I don't think anybody can actually defend that, and that would go for a lot of artists. I think he was basically just defending the, post. the one accusation that seemed to start this whole narrative, for lack of a better word, of the <sighs> bullying. Okay. It's a lot. It's a lot. Now, Demi's kind of been out of the spotlight for a little bit, but she's recently been back in the spotlight because right. she's coming out with new music, and this is why it's so relevant, she just recently signed with Scooter Braun. And of yeah. course, we were all like, oh my God, this music's gonna be a smash, because Scooter, when he manages your career, he usually creates right. a, a and star. Every, like, she said on her Insta stories, quote, I have dealt with bad people in this industry and Scooter is not one of them. He's a good man. Personally, I'm grateful he came into my life when he did. Please stop dragging people or bullying them. There's enough hate in this world as it is. She went on to say, y'all can come after me if you want, but I'm always gonna stay loyal to my team. I value loyalty more than most people in this world. And if my name is gonna be brought into the conversations, I'm gonna stand up for myself and the ones on my team. Well, Todrick Hall, who's one of Taylor's best friends and was the co-executive producer for Taylor's You Need to Calm Down music video, had a lot to say. So he said, for those asking, I left Scooter Braun a long time ago. I'm saddened by this news, but not shocked. He is an evil person whose only concern is his wealth and feeding his disgusting ego. I believe he is homophobic and I know from his own mouth that he is not a swift man. Ooh. 
He went on to say, I would normally not say anything because I'm sure Scooter will threaten me like he has before to keep me quiet. But guess what, Scooter? Nothing you can do to me will be worse than six years of my life I can't get back from when I was ignored as your artist. So Demi responded in Todrick's comment section on Instagram and said, hey boo, I don't know you or anything, which is kind of shady by the way. And this isn't hate, but making claims that someone is homophobic is really serious. Please don't spread information that isn't true because I can guarantee you Scooter isn't. As a member of the LGBTQ plus community myself, he wouldn't have signed me if he was. No hate, just trying to clear that up. Then Todrick responded on Twitter saying, PSA, just because you have a black friend doesn't mean you can't still be racist, and just because you're not picketing against gay marriage doesn't mean you're not homophobic. I said what I said, and I believe what I believe. Lord, have mercy. This is this is where it gets really complicated, and Ish starts hitting all of the walls, yeah. and all of the fans. It's because everybody has different experiences with Scooter Braun, and you cannot disregard anybody's personal experience with him because yeah. so many people have worked with him and like Todrick spent six years of his career with this six man. years That's and a if long you time. haven't followed Todrick like I followed him since the very beginning he yeah. is so freaking talented and I remember when he was signed with Scooter I always wondered like he took off but not in a way where I felt somebody with so much right. talent should take off so to his credit like I kind of understand where he's saying he felt neglected as yeah. an artist yeah um but for Demi to come out and say this I get his frustration too because she did just recently sign with him. Of course, like you're gonna have a great experience with somebody who just signed with you and wants to like yeah. get money from you and make money from right. you or off you. Um, somebody else who has been inserted into the conversation but did not insert herself into the conversation is Ariana Grande. And the way this happened was kind of because of, of course, Instagram. Yeah. So when the news came out that Scooter was doing this deal, Ari took to her Insta story and insert screenshot here and she congratulated Scooter on his deal, probably before Taylor made her statement, before all the backlash, and then she deleted it, but of course fans saw this post yeah. before she deleted it, and they're like now saying that she should drop Scooter as her manager and blah, 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 blah. So Sinead, I kinda wanna know what do you think about that, because it kinda goes back to what you were saying, where every person has a different experience right. with that. So if one person has an awful experience with the manager, but somebody else has a great experience and their career is thriving, does that mean that because one of their fellow peers dealt with them and didn't have the greatest experience that they should then. So having somebody that close to you, it creates a whole different vibe and a whole different like texture of a relationship. So it's sad to me that all of this very personal accounts of like what different relationships are that I feel like only those people can actually understand is being thrown on social media because a lot of people are now creating their own opinions of people. And honestly, Ariana Grande probably had no idea about that deal, meaning that Scooter was gonna be acquiring the music. And if we're being 100% honest, like, is it possible that Scooter did that just because he wants to make money and actually wasn't thinking about acquiring any of Taylor's music? I mean. Because the whole reason his holdings group took control of big music is so they can open another, a $300 million deal. So shame on him for not thinking about it, if that is the case. But like, even if he did know, I don't think he cares. I don't think he and, cares. And he just wants to make money, but which is not a good thing, obviously. Right, he should. But honestly, the whole thing is a lot, and obviously, this just broke last night and has still been developing. Yeah. I don't know why I keep stuttering over my words. Because there's, have you ever said the word scooter so many times in your life? <laughs> scooter. And I just scooter. think the main, the like baseline here is like the real conversation should be why has Taylor Swift not been allowed to own her music? Why did her first her first manager ever, the guy from Big Music, Much Music, what Big, is it called? Big Machine. Yes, Big Machine, thank you. <laughs> uh, how come that guy didn't allow her to, what's his name, like Borch, Borcher, Borcotti, Scott or something? Whatever, I don't know. Oh, what? Borchetta, yeah. Thank you. So yeah. how come that guy didn't allow her to own her music from the get-go? If he believed in her so much, why yeah. would he not allow her to, to own her music? And why should she still have to fight for it today? It's complicated, guys. We'll keep you updated. Well, unless, Actually, this is pretty dramatic as well. <laughs> <laughs> it was the season finale of Keeping Up with the Kardashians last night. I have been following this season religiously. Religiously, um, yes. Basically because I've been waiting for the season finale because I knew that was when we were going to get to find out all the drama mm -hmm. that went on behind the scenes during the Jordan Woods Tristan Thompson scandal. Mm. And it was actually like really, really sad. So we weren't surprised that Chloe obviously was opening up fully, truly letting everybody know her true feelings after she found out that Tristan and Jordan Woods had hooked up. But we were a little bit surprised to see Kylie's reaction because we haven't gotten a lot from her. And she actually broke down like 
crying in last night's season finale, and it was actually pretty emotional. I just hope that there's a light at the end of this tunnel, but I don't see it right now. Jordan didn't make an appearance in the episode, but Kylie did talk to her at least a couple of times throughout the episode that we know of. And some of the sisters were more understanding of Kylie's situation and her her take on the whole thing and her friendship with Jordan than other people were, obviously. Liar! The biggest thing I think as well was kind of seeing just Chloe be like, dude, this is not a TV show. Like, this is my life. And she kind of went into her having to then apologize, which we remember, to Jordan for putting a lot of blame on Jordan. And it was during that that we saw another thing that happened that we didn't get to see at, at the time. But Kylie basically was the one who called Kim and said, we can't bully Jordan. Like, we're better than this. And she was responding to basically seeing like those Snapchats on, on uh, Kim's Instagram where they were like posting like really subtle videos of them singing about mm -hmm. cheaters. Mm -hmm. And so then Kylie called Kim and she totally broke down like, like crying, crying. So it was just like, it was a lot, it was crazy. Cause Kylie like actually met up with, or Jordan went to Kylie's house. She to basically get wanted things. to get her stuff. Yeah, and Kylie was like, well, can you come inside? And even that should show you that Kylie was also like, wait, do, can you come inside and talk to me? Like, mm -hmm. they're still best friends, but obviously it's like how how you be best friends with someone who does that to your flesh and blood. It's right. just the whole thing was just actually really sad to watch from beginning to end. Uh, super dramatic. All right, so we have to talk about Tana Mojo and Jake Paul again. Uh, of course, if you don't know, <laughs> uh, they're engaged. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> um, and people have let us know how they feel. Bella Thorne was very vocal. Um, even Logan Paul got on his podcast to let us know how he feels. Um, but the interesting thing is Billie Eilish has now chimed in with her thoughts on it. So if you don't know, Tana Mojo is a huge Billie Eilish fan. She's dressed up as her before. Um, she's expressed her love for her on Twitter all the time. There's this one photo of her like actually bowing down after meeting her. It's wild. So when Tana posted this photo from the night she got engaged to Jake and she captioned it, when your real life engagement raises your Instagram engagement, hi fiance, Billy actually commented on the photo. Two separate comments, by the way. The first one says eek, and the second one says yikes. He said yikes. Do you say yikes when you're like super excited? Or do you say yikes when you're like, no. oh god. The fact that she said eek and yikes, like that's clearly her disapproving and kind of dragging this whole thing. And I have to say like if Beyonce commented on my engagement photo, which I'm not engaged yet. <laughs> AJ. AJ, what the <laughs> um, heck? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if Billy or Beyonce commented on my engagement photo, and I'm a huge fan and I've met her before, and she knows I'm a huge fan, and she said, eek and yikes, I would be devastated. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, oh, oh my no, God. what does this mean? Yeah, that's actually like really sad to yeah. think about. Because it's like, I don't know, it, it could be her saying, um, I don't think this is real. It could be if this is real still, what, what the actual, it's like, it's just not a good thing. All right, guys, it's time for the final rundown. She didn't know what to do because this is our first rundown. It's like the final <laughs> countdown. Like, I honestly have no idea what's well, happening. Well, it's actually good. I have copyright issues. I may not be able to do that, but <laughs> it's cute. Um, okay, so start the timer. One minute, 30 seconds on I'm the excited. clock starting now. There were three. I spit a lot. Three celebrity weddings that happened this weekend, starting with Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner. Mm. So Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas had their second wedding at a beautiful chateau in France, and this wedding wasn't live streamed by Diplo, unfortunately, or actually, that's probably a good thing. But we're slowly getting glimpses from the ceremony. We'll keep you updated. And if you're a Vanderpump Rules fan, Britney and Jax tied the knot at a castle in Kentucky. It was beautiful. And Zoe Kravitz and Carl Glissman were married in Paris at Lenny Kravitz's house. And the cool thing was the whole cast of Big Little Lies was there to support, which made me cry because I freaking love that show. Honestly, I don't know who had the best wedding. Maybe I know, the Big I can't Little decide. Lies wedding. Like, I what the heck? Um, also, Lil Nas X came out, and I thought we all kind of already knew that. <laughs> he kind of thought so too. Yeah. But basically, he tweeted, "Some of y'all already know. Some of y'all don't care. Some of y'all not gonna f with me no more. But before this month ends, I want y'all to listen closely to closure." And at one point, he said, "Yeah." thought I made it obvious. Listen, I'm happy for him and I'm glad that everyone knows now and it's cool to see how many people are truly supporting yeah, him. Um, so congrats that. to you and for those who already knew, I'm sure you're still sending your congrats. However, moving on, um, we have to talk about Kim Kardashian because she got backlash for her kimono line and she's actually changing the name. She posted this photo and said, I'm always listening, learning, and growing. When I announced the name of my shapewear line, I did so with the best intentions in mind. After careful thought and consideration, I will be launching my solution wear brand under a new name. I will be 
in touch soon. Thank you for understanding and support always. I love that. Yeah, it's actually worth wait. Oh, oh my god. That is the I know it's that aggressive. That is the most offensive <laughs> alarm ever. Is that is that what you wake up to in the morning? No, that's just the final rundown timer. So it's, uh, it's done. But um yeah. Scary. I'm glad that Kim changed the name. Yeah, it's good. Good for her. Congrats to Lil Nas X and congrats to all the celeb weddings. What a great weekend. Yeah, what a, also congrats to Tana and Jake on your engagement. <laughs> Let's not forget them. Thanks. All right, guys, that is a wrap on today's episode of DHR. I have to know what you mm -hmm. think about this whole Taylor Swift drama. Do you think that I just, there's, I don't even have a specific I question. Know. Just let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, because it's a lot. Yeah, maybe like, do you think that it's about time that nobody starts saying anything else anymore? <laughs> like maybe everyone should just stop, you know, responding or getting have involved. Have in-person conversations, yeah, Like meet, meet for a coffee or right. something, or lunch. Right. On a lunch. Something. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot. But let us know in the comment section <laughs> below. And um, of course, we'll be back here tomorrow because this show is a daily show, so yeah. you better be here. If Imagine you're not, all the news by then. I know. All right, guys, before you go, make sure you click right over there to check out the last episode of DHR. Good job. And there's a subscribe button down here. Down where? Down here. Oh, I see how you're doing like reverse point. Yeah. Interesting. Otherwise, I'd be like this, mm. and I would like block maybe. Right, right, right. I would get cut off. Right. Just click subscribe. Yeah. <laughs>